All right, so we have some cheeses that are in the freezer so that they can taste fresh. And um, so in order to keep the brie cheese frozen in time, we put it into the freezer. Here we have some cow pork. From all the cheese making, you get a lot of whey. So we make whey cubes and they make delicious smoothies. More Floridanica cork. Feta cheese for Greek salad. And frozen milk for kefir, and especially keeping the kefir buds alive in the wintertime. This is the cheese cake. Almost empty. <laughs> we have some bel pernol, and no, they did not come from elephants. <laughs> Monterey Jack, Ibors. Honey, rose, and some traditional cheddar and caraway gouda. That'll last us for probably two, three more months. All right, so this is the last of our makeshift Rubbermaid cheese caves, in which we have cheeses that have not been waxed or vacuum packed. They've been either rubbed with honey or with olive oil. We don't have many of them left, but this is what we have left so far. This is Ibor's. Spanish style smoked paprika and you can see they all have mold on them but don't be worried about that we'll just go inside and scrape them off and uh, recover them with the oil and paprika mixture and these are dry jacks don't be worried about the mold it's completely normal this is the blue cheese cake we have to keep it in the fridge because it must stay colder. So, okay, this was made in September. So blue cheese generally doesn't last until late February. So in order to keep it to last, I vacuum packed it up on January 18th. This is not blue cheese. This is a different one. These two are Roque 40, just regular blue cheese. And we have a tiny piece of Stilton blue cheese left. That's the favorite. So as the cheese ages, you need it to scrape it and cover it less often. And you can see that the mold grows on the mixture and not on the cheese. This is the dry jack. And the mixture on this one is coffee grounds, cocoa nibs, olive oil, and coffee. As you can see, there's hardly any mold on this. There's a little bit. So here's our olive oil and smoked paprika. The oil also absorbs the smoked flavor and the paprika flavor and carries it into the cheese. These cheeses were made in approximately October. All right, so before we had the cheese flip this way when we took it out of the box and um, you can see this hole that hole is from the way that we pressed it. So the way that we pressed it was um, in the cheesecloth and this is from the knot of the cheesecloth. That's just the way you do dry jack. So whenever you um, rub your cheeses and put them back, you flip them and put them this way, the opposite way, so that the moisture can evenly distributed. So I don't have any, any uh, mixture left at the moment, so I'm going to just put some olive oil on to help keep the mold off and the cheese from drying out. So in case you're wondering, the jars back here on the wall are uh, Amberlin's kombucha that is being fermented, double fermented now, with different flavors. So now that the cheeses are free of mold and rubbed, 
they are ready to go back into hibernation in their cheesecake. Say cheese!